Hey, everybody, welcome back to Board and Savior. Today, where am I? For the entirety of my Board and Savior YouTube career thus far, I was living in an apartment in Texas, and now I am living in an apartment in New York. And it's different, because different, it's, this is like, it's wild. Different places look different. Uh, and so that's why this one looks different because it's a different place so i am just it's been a while i was i was based on my normal upload schedule i was supposed to post last week and i didn't because uh nothing looked good at all and uh and that's a problem i wanted it to look good even what you're seeing right now this is not the final this is not what it will look like when i upload my first video reviewing a game that you have seen in the b-roll of this i don't know if you've seen it yet we'll see how i edit this it's probably coming later but uh, easter eggs yeah oh exciting first review um so this uh, my thought is that i'm gonna swap out because right now what you've got behind me is a little two by four four high two across of uh, an ikea calax shelf and then on either side a one by four and i think what makes the most sense, and you can you can let me know what you think about this for the framing. I think I'm gonna swap the one by fours for two by fours as well. And then they'll go all the way out to the edges of the frame. I think that'll just look a little bit nicer. Um, I've got like a, a cabinet over here with some miniatures, which it looks, it looks good, but I, I feel like with the shadows and stuff, like it's a little weird. The other, th the other thing that is uh, pending is the lights that I've got coming at me right now are super harsh. Like, if you if you look at this hand, this shadow is like incredibly, incredibly harsh. So I have uh, some diffusion stuff coming to uh, lessen that harshness a little bit, soften that up, make this all look a little bit nicer. Um, I'm also curious, like, if you can see, like there's like little floaties around. I don't know what to do about that. Well, we'll figure that out if we need to. But this is where I will be filming uh, the, the bulk of the videos at this table. Um, I'll have probably at some point I'll get another camera and then we'll have like the two angles like I've done in the uh, you can't you'll it this doesn't matter. What you want are my tails because I moved a whole bunch of board games thousands of miles and that comes with stories. And so I'm here to tell you all of those stories. Excited? You should be. So first, let's talk about packing up all of the board games into the truck. We had the, the previous video kind of talked about packing everything into the boxes. Go watch that if you haven't, if you want to know what it's like to move a lot of board games. Um, but into the truck, it was <laughs> a nightmare. I had help for some of it, but I'd say like 70 to 80% of the moving was me alone. Here's a photo of me after I moved everything into the truck. I was not happy. It was a tough day. Um, it was really terrible. It took several hours. I was on the second floor, so it's not as bad as it could have been. There was a third floor and I was only moving down, which is good. Oh, I'm not used to having a drink. Um, but uh, it was terrible. It was like in the 90s, high 90s in Texas. It sucked. I was pouring sweat the entire time um started like the actual moving process i don't know maybe around noonish. which if you're sitting there and you're thinking that's got to be like you're moving into the hottest part of the day while doing the moving you're absolutely right and that's because um the schedule was go pick up the truck at like 10:30. Uh, and then start moving it once we get the truck back. But then like some things kind of got shifted around. Um, my roommate needed the truck first to move some stuff to their new place. And so that all happened. And so by the time actually like moving started, it was, it was later in the day already. And you didn't want to wait too late because the very next day, I plan to drive right first thing in the morning. So it's just like you pack up the truck this day or you don't take everything. And I wanted to take everything because I like my stuff. You get it. You like your stuff, right? Um, so yeah, in the in the hottest part of the day, uh, I walked 
uh, what was the total number of boxes? 16, 32. It's got to be, it had to be over 40 total boxes. Um, probably, probably not quite to 50 boxes, maybe like 44 ish total boxes. Um, pretty much all of the size that you saw in that last video. Here's a little clip if you forgot. And they were varying heavinesses. Some of them were. I was very mad at myself for packing some of them the way that I did. There were only a few that were like nightmarishly heavy, but there were a few uh, that that were like a problem. Um, and they were, <laughs> they really sucked. Uh, but after all the boxes got packed up, then it was time to do some of the stranger sized things. Uh, this table was brought from there to here. Um, and then my, I, I brought six chairs. This chair that you see me sitting in is one of them. I think I'm gonna get a dedicated like board and savior set chair at some point, but I haven't found the perfect one yet. Um, but then this can go in the other, in the dining room for the other board game table. This is like the set board game table and that's like the playing board game table, which I recognize that I've got a pretty sweet life. If I have two tables dedicated to some board gaming thing, I'm not upset. That was a ridiculous Facebook marketplace find, the one that you're seeing on screen right now. That table is, it's so ridiculously heavy um, because it's just like solid wood. It's amazing. It's so cool. It's uh, just under eight feet long and uh, right around, I think at the widest, it's right around four feet wide. It's so cool. It's going to be so great for like, because I was playing Twilight Imperium on this table with like a crappy table topper that I made uh, just by, like, I just bought plywood from uh, Lowe's and then stained it and sanded it and tried to make it as nice as possible. But it was like slightly curved upwards on the on the sides. And so I'm I'm greatly looking forward to playing those giant like Twilight Imperium style games on a table that can actually support them. Oh, I can't wait. Anyway, brought this table, brought all the chairs. The chairs, I was not confident that I was going to be able to fit them at all because like it's chairs they're weird you gotta like do weird stacking and then they're, they're they take up too much space but I brought all of the chairs I brought my office my like desk chair I was able to bring that um obviously my pc itself and the monitors like all that stuff was able to kind of squeeze in all of the shelves that you saw and are seeing all of those shelves were in the moving truck as well it was a 10 foot, it was the smallest moving truck that, that uh, what's it called, U-Haul offers. And I did it, I got it all in there. It was awesome, like it was so tight in the picture that I'm showing right now. You can see how close to the edge everything was. Um, the rest of the truck was laid out very well. It was very nicely organized. It's just at the end that everything was just getting kind of like jammed into places. And it doesn't look very pretty. I recognize that. Uh, but the rest of it looked real pretty. It was great. But you don't, I don't have a picture of that. <laughs> You'll just have to take my word. Um, so the moving day, moving out day was grueling and horrid. Uh, but I got through it. And then after you do all the packing stuff into the truck, you have to do all the last cleaning stuff. So I ended that day at maybe 1 a.m. And I had, I've got like this little watch that tells me how many steps I've taken. It said that I had taken 23,000 steps on the day. And uh, I wish I wish it had been able to kind of spread it out a little bit more, but hey, it's it's in my past now. I have no lingering injuries. Uh, maybe I have lingering trauma, but um, I'll see. I'll I'll see someone here, and I'll I'll get that taken care of, if needed. Um, so that was that day. It was rough, and then I woke up at like 7:30 and started driving across the country. And my original plan for that, because from Austin, Texas, to where I am in New York, Western New York, um, it is just about 24 hours. It's like right around. It's like 23 hours, 30 minutes is the, on Google Maps, it's what, how long it says it's gonna take. 
And I have never in one go driven more than eight hours. So I figured just like split it up into three, three eight hour days. That seems like that makes the most sense. Maybe you do like eight, eight, and then the last day is the shortest, like seven hours, 40 minutes. Um, that felt like a logical thing to do. Uh, and then I remember that my friend lives in Memphis, Tennessee, which means that the first day I would have to push myself an extra two hours and then kind of great if you have an eight hour day and then a six hour day on the last one like that. You end with a not bad day at all. You kind of get easier as you go. And then, uh oh, my friend in Memphis was like, hey, my catalytic converter or his, his roommate's catalytic converter got stolen off of the car. And, uh, you know, th there's like auto crime all the time everywhere in Memphis. And so I said, hey, buddy, do you remember what I'm taking with me? It's everything I own in a truck that I would really rather not wake up and have the truck be gone. And even if it's a small chance, even if it's unlikely, I thought maybe let's do everything we can to make that not happen. Um, so I, he was cool with it. I was very appreciative. We ended up meeting up 40 minutes outside of Memphis in a tiny little town called Deerfield. Um, and I stayed at the Deerfield Inn outside of Memphis, Tennessee. And it was like the quietest, deadest, safest feeling uh, little town. And he came over for a little while and we watched the Buffalo Bills play a football game. And if you're watching now, you know that that was the last good football game that the Buffalo Bills ever played, <laughs> uh, tragically. So that's that's too bad that that was the last time they decided to be good. But um, hey, it was good to watch that with my buddy. Uh, so thank you, Josh, for coming out and uh, hanging out with me. The thing about the next day is that my plan, because I was considering like where are generally safe places in the US on my route to stop. Um, and I know that like probably anywhere that you stop any city, you can pick a safe part of the city and you'll probably be fine. But I wanted to be like extra, extra safe because it, it truly is every single thing that I own is in that truck, everything. So let's make, let's, let's, let's go out of our way to be safe, right? Um, so I determined that like the safest next place on the route that made sense for the amount that I wanted to drive was in Ohio. And that meant that I would drive 10 ish, 10 and a half hours the first day, 10 and a half hours the second day, and then uh, would have only like three hours on the last day. Like, totally reasonable, totally doable. See, the problem with that though, right? And I feel like you heard it, is a three hour drive on the last day really feels like a pointless amount to drive on the last day feels like maybe you just kind of grit your teeth and you just drive that three hours the day before and instead of a 10 hour day you have like a 13 hour 13 and a half hour day and like i said most i've ever driven in a day up to this point is eight hours so going from eight to 13 and a half sounds really significant that sounds like a scary bad extra amount of time to do but I was like, that's probably what I'm going to do. <laughs> like, I'm going to drink as many energy drinks as I need to. If my heart explodes, so be it. Like, I'm going to be good. If I need to, I will pull over. I will get a hotel for the night. I'll, I'll stop and I'll, I'll, you know, sleep. But if I can do it, I'm going to do it. And then I'll just sleep um, at my parents' place, and then we'll all go over to the new place together, we'll all unload together, because now I live where my family lives, which, how nice is that? Um, so that was the plan, and here's the freaking crazy thing, people. It was fine. Most I've ever driven is eight hours, and on that eight-hour day, I was losing it by the end, doing, you know, as, as you do, you're driving for a long time, you get that kind of like highway hypnosis, you start to like have to really 
keep yourself awake uh, and keep yourself focused. And it just wasn't a problem. It wasn't at all a problem. And my only like theory on this is that I was so anxious to drive the box truck and keep me and my belongings and the people on the road with me safe um, that I just was, my brain was like, you gotta be alert. And then it was alert. And I don't know why it doesn't feel like that's true when I'm driving a car and I have to keep myself and the other people on the road safe, but it doesn't. The truck, my only theory is that the truck was so freaky and weird and different to drive that my brain like clicked into another gear and said, I don't care how long you're going to make me drive. I'm just going to be on. I'm just going to go until you tell me to stop. And that's what happened. I neither day even drank a full energy drink driving for 13 hours. I didn't get through a full drink, um, which is I would not have been able to predict that before it all happened. But that's what happened, and blissfully, there were no real scares on the road. Um, there was one, like, the closest thing to any amount of actual danger scary time on the road uh, was just, I don't know, three cars ahead slammed on the brakes and that like chain reaction came back to me and I happened to be following at a far enough distance that I was able to slam on the brakes and stop before hitting the car in front of me but boy oh boy I was following at the perfect distance because I I would estimate that there was one to two feet between the front of my car and the bumper of theirs after everyone uh, ended up stopping so that was the only like scare but that was it Everything else was pretty smooth sailing, um, and yeah, you got a couple, I don't know, thousand pounds of stuff behind you. I don't know if that's accurate. Maybe it is. I have no idea. Someone who knows more about 10-foot U-Hauls, let me know if 2,000 pounds is reasonable of stuff in the back. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was... It was scary-ish at first to like drive that truck. I've never driven uh, anything like that for that long before, um, especially nothing with uh, without a rear view mirror. That was weird, but you, you get used to it. The mirrors on the sides are big and they've got like that kind of curved thing so you can pretty much see everything that's going on around you. Um, and so I would say with this amount of story, if you are thinking about, if you're prepping to do like a long distance move with a bunch of board games and you're scared about, do, I think you'll be okay. Like I, I really, I was so nervous. I am, I am a big uh, planner, worrier, all of that, anxious traveler, everything. And you can't do much to prepare for it other than... Uh, planning out the route like you can't it doesn't really make financial sense to be like i'm gonna rent a box truck ahead of time and drive it around and get the feel you kind of just have to like learn it on the fly and that's what i did and it was okay like it really was i'm a nervous guy uh i freak out about stuff but it was it was fine and i think it will be fine for you too if you have to do that um and then i got here and I unpacked everything, and then for a very long time, there were just a crap load of boxes everywhere, and that has diminished day by day. I, I took off like the whole week um, of moving so that I could move uh, and move in and unpack stuff, and then when like work rolled around on the next Monday, I would be living in not just a hellscape of boxes. I was able to do a good amount, probably like 70% of the move-in stuff with my time off, um, which was great. This room was one of the last ones that I set up, like today, which you're seeing this on Wednesday. I'm recording this the day before. It is Tuesday right now. Tuesday is the day that I finished setting this stuff up. And as I said earlier, it's not even done. Um, but this is one of the last rooms because this is less important like if i if i don't have my board game studio like i think life can go on um i was making sure to set up all the other more communal spaces and all that stuff first uh but this is this is it was so cool to have like a studio space like a room in my apartment is just this and it is it is my dream where 
I can. I just flick on these two lights. I flick on this. I turn on this little recorder and I turn on the camera and we're, we're just going. It's so great. I don't have to take stuff out. I don't have to. Oh, it's it's truly like a dream come true. I love it so much. Um, it's it was it has been expensive and it's not done being expensive. I need to get more things and uh, that's too bad. And I want to get I don't know when this will happen, but I want to get a second camera so that I can have like the two angles recording simultaneously. And then so that that second camera can be the one that is mobile and I can set it up at other spots around the apartment to record uh, just various angles of me talking about board games. So you're not just looking at me from one spot in one room, uh, but this will be obviously I set it all up. This will be the main place that I do my board gamey stuff because look at it. Isn't it so nice? Um, but that is, I think that's the majority of my tales. I don't think there's anything else. I've been playing games with my buddies here in, uh, New York, which is it's so fun to be able to do like I haven't seen these guys in quite a long time and so it's it's just great to be to be back uh, and hopefully you will come with me on many journeys yet to come uh, and we can toast to each other and sip water on camera I was gonna drink but it's, it'll be all slurpy and gross but uh, yeah, you know, that's fine don't worry about it yeah I think that's where we're going to end here. I've just kind of rambled at you, just telling telling you some stories. And in two weeks, ooh, a hair just landed in my water. I caught it. Ooh, good for me. In two weeks, you will see me review Galactic Renaissance, probably. Most likely, that'll be what I do in two weeks. And then after that, who knows? But it'll be so exciting, and we'll do it together, and we'll laugh, and we'll frolic through the trees, and it'll be great, right? So take care, toodaloo, and God bless. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>